Every now and then on the channel, I like doing dedicated videos on certain players or appreciation posts, and I've been wanting to do this one for a while since he joined the Chicago Bulls this past offseason, and that is none other than the man, the myth, the legend, the goat, the bald mamba, the Caruso, and a host of other nicknames. Yes, you know him as Alex Caruso, a guy who may not look like your typical basketball player, but has pick and prodded and fought his way from college, bounced around in the G League, to earning himself an NBA contract, to now being one of the best defenders and hustle players in the league. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the incredible story and rise of Alex Caruso, why he is so impactful on this Bulls team, and what makes him such a fan favorite. So what's going on, everyone? You are listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, before I get into the content, if you enjoy videos like these, and of course, if you're a Bulls fan, consider subscribing as a little more than half of you watching are not subscribed. So whether you're new or a longtime watcher of the channel, hit the subscribe button as it really helps out the channel and ensures that you never miss a video. I'll be covering the Bulls all season long, so you don't want to miss out. But with that being said, let's dive into the content. So the story of Alex Caruso is an interesting one, because what most people don't know was that Caruso actually was an ESPN top 100 recruit coming out of high school, a late one anyway. He was the number 82 recruit overall in 2012, and he did receive a scholarship to play at Texas A&M where he played all four years and was a solid player. He played very similar to what you see from Caruso today in that he was a guy that did all the little things on the court, a scrappy defender, a guy who would get on the floor to fight for loose balls, a guy who wasn't afraid to draw contact even when he was in foul trouble, but because Caruso wasn't a standout in college in the sense that he didn't possess elite athleticism, high scoring ability, and of course, not having the size and physique of an NBA player, in the 2016 NBA draft the year Caruso graduated from A&M, he was not selected by any NBA team, and so like most undrafted prospects, Caruso had to take his chances at working his way in to the league and proving he was worth a spot on someone's roster. And that starts with playing in the Summer League. And Caruso joined the Philadelphia 76ers Summer League in 2016, but was ultimately not picked up by the team after the Summer League concluded. However, the Oklahoma City Thunder did end up signing Caruso shortly before the season, really as a training camp invite, and was later waived to have him play for the Oklahoma City Blue, the Thunder's G League affiliate, then at the time known as the D League. Uh, Caruso played that entire season with the Oklahoma City Blue in the D League and played pretty well, but not enough to get himself called up to the big leagues and also not enough to have OKC re-sign him to remain with the Blue the following season. So in the summer of 2017, Caruso was yet again looking for another team to pick him up to take a chance on him. And the LA Lakers invited him to join their summer league team in 2017. This was also the year Lonzo Ball was drafted by the Lakers with the second overall pick. So both Lonzo and Caruso were teammates on the Lakers summer league in 2017. And this is where Caruso finally caught his break in signing a contract with an NBA team as he was a standout in that summer league and actually led the Lakers to the summer league championship after Lonzo Ball had to sit out with an injury. And so on July 13th, 2017, Caruso signed a two-way contract with the Lakers to where he would play with their G League affiliate for a portion of the season and get some run with the Lakers themselves. And he actually became the first player to go directly from the G League to a two-way contract in the NBA. Caruso then made his NBA debut that season on October 19th against the Clippers where he played 12 minutes. Now, he only played 37 games that season with the Lakers while he played the other half of the season with their G League team. Uh, and in that season, he did okay, averaging 3.6 points per game in 15 minutes of play. He wasn't all that efficient and wasn't snatching cookies like we come to see today. But where Caruso really broke out was the following season, the 2018-19 season, again still under a two-way contract, so he was playing most of his time in the G League, but playing incredibly well in the G League as one of the league's top defenders and was ultimately selected second team All-NBA G League player in 2018. And in the 25 games in which he played with the Lakers in 2018, which was the first season in which LeBron joined the Lakers but subsequently missed the playoffs, Caruso started putting up career highs in all statistical categories, scoring 32 points in one game. He was tallying high steal numbers, assist totals. Get this, he became the only player other than LeBron James to record a 30-plus point, 10-plus rebound, and 5-plus assist game. Caruso was much more efficient in that season than he was prior, shooting 44% from the field and a ridiculous 48% from three, and improving his free throw shooting to near 80% as well. And so in that summer off season of 2019, when free agency hit, the Lakers offered Alex Caruso his first full NBA contract, two years worth $5.5 million, which even at that time, 
Some were claiming this to be an overpay because a lot of people felt that the Lakers did this as a desperation move after failing to reach the playoffs with LeBron James. But Caruso did in fact prove to be worth it and more, especially at the time when he was only 25 years old and ended up going on to help the Lakers win the championship in 2020, having an incredible postseason run in the bubble with his tenacity on the defensive end, and even proving to be a scoring spark off the bench. This is really the season where the Caruso and Bald Mamba goat nicknames all started to emerge. Caruso then went on to have another successful season with the Lakers, maintaining a strong defense and unmatched energy that the team always fed off of. Now, in this past offseason, it was thought that the Lakers would have offered Caruso a more sizable contract in the previous two year $5.5 million deal for all of his efforts that he put into the team and just how valuable he was as a glue guy on the roster. But because the Lakers were capped out and stretched thin, they were not able to offer him a large enough contract enticing enough that could match the kind of deal that the Bulls front office had proposed. And after a few days of free agency remaining open and the Lakers failing to agree to an extension, Alex Caruso signed a four year $37 million contract to become a member of the Chicago Bulls. And let's be real. There were a lot of Bulls fans questioning the signing, not necessarily Caruso himself and what he could bring to the team, but more so how much he was offered given it was a long-term contract and one that would pay him significantly more per year than what he was getting previously. And I remember telling a lot of Bulls fans, sure, the price point is a bit high, but you cannot underestimate the value this guy is going to have on the defensive end, which the Bulls are so desperately going to need. And not only that, but the value a vocal high IQ player can bring to the organization. If you guys have been following my channel for a while now, you know I am all about the high energy hustle players who have high basketball IQ and are vocal leaders on the court. It's one of the reasons Joakim Noah is one of my favorite Bulls of all time. So I was more high on this signing than most Bulls fans were, even though it wasn't necessarily a sexy star level signing like we saw from DeMar DeRozan or Lonzo Ball. But what I did not expect is for Alex Caruso to show up as one of the most underrated free agency signings in the league. And I really do mean that, trying to as put much bias aside as I possibly can, and I'll explain why. First off, when you look at the value and production level that a guy like Caruso brings, relative to his annual salary, which currently sits at $8.6 million and will be $9.8 million by the final year of his deal, you look at that relative to what other players in the league are getting paid with lower production, lower efficiency, lower defensive metrics, and you can see the type of return you get from Alex Caruso on a dollar-for-dollar -dollar basis. Second, it cannot be understated. The level of impact, cohesion, chemistry he brings to the Bulls, if you look at his on-court, off-court numbers. First of all, Caruso has only missed one game so far this season, and it was the Bulls' worst loss of the year in terms of point differential, where they lost to the Pacers by 30-plus points. Granted, there were other circumstances that led to that bad loss, but something to call out. It was the only game he missed, and the Bulls had their worst blowout of the season. But that game aside, what might surprise you is that Alex Caruso has the best defensive box plus minus on the Bulls roster. He's ranked ahead of guys like Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball in win shares. He's fourth on the team in value over replacement player. He's not only first in steals on the team per game, but he's also first in steals in the entire league and leads the Bulls anyway, in terms of steals per game by a significant margin. And when you factor that in on a per 36 minute steal rate, he's also ranked number one in the entire league. And he leads the team in deflections per game as well. When Caruso is on the court, the Bulls are more likely to get out quickly in transition, but also they post their best defensive numbers with him on the floor. Pace and speed at which they play is at its peak when he's in. And of course, what we have learned most recently is that he is really one of the only players that doesn't seem to struggle going against a zone defense, which we we saw with the Miami Heat when they did several times the other day. And of course, there are some things that just don't show up in the stat sheet and you really can't compare with numbers. It's all the intangibles, being that veteran voice to inspire and motivate guys on the court, yelling out switches and screens, hustling on every play, having that infectious energy that spreads throughout the team that guys feed off of and thrive on. Joakim Noah, for example, not the most athletic player, not the most skilled player on offense, but the team thrived off of his energy and the Bulls were incredibly successful as a result. People always talk about Derrick Rose and how he was the best player, the star player, which he was, but Noah was the engine that kept that Bulls team going. And when he was off the court, you felt it. Now, I'm not comparing Caruso to Noah because Noah was a multiple-time All-Star, All-Defensive Team player, a Defensive Player of the Year winner. I like Caruso. He's not on that level. But more so comparing the ability that both of these players have in rallying the team together to play their best basketball because if they give it their all every night, other guys are going to want to do that as well. 
A guy that isn't the most gifted athletically or as talented as most players in the league, but a guy who is the glue that keeps the team together and is one of the main drivers to success. For all of the jokes aside about Caruso being the GOAT and all the memes of Jordan passing the torch to Caruso, there is something to be said about players like Alex Caruso who went against all odds in making a name for themselves in the NBA and proving all of the doubters wrong who passed up on them, giving him a chance to showcase his value. And it's why I love having this guy on my team. It's why I love how the front office has their eye on everything in terms of finding complimentary pieces to round out the roster. And I can't wait to see what Caruso will bring to this organization for the next four years. Leave a like and show our boy Alex Caruso some support. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about these types of videos. And let me know what you think about Alex Caruso and what he brings to the Bulls organization if there was anything that I overlooked. And of course, as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.